it's noon here in Lagos, Nigeria. Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channels Television. I'm Kairo Kikilu. Well, here's our lineup for today. And for another day, the protests continue in River State, South South Nigeria, with some women blocking the road leading to the international airport, while Martin Amiwule and other politicians march the streets in support of FCT Minister Yesam Wiki, and that's in spite of the rain. And while the nation awaits the fulfillment of President Tinubu's promise to send a new minimum wage bill to the National Assembly, the Nigeria Labour Congress NLC is asking the president to consult widely for doing so. The new leadership of the Southern Governors Forum says it has its eyes set on food security and improving infrastructure in each state in the region amidst rising cost of living. Another day, another protest march in River State for the latest chapter in the string of political drama. Well, this time, top political leaders from the different wards of Obiapur have taken to the streets to show their solidarity with the FCT Minister, Mr. Yesam Wike, in this protest march. Well, leading the protesters who gathered at the Rumoemo Civic Center, Port Harcourt, are the minority leader of the House of Representatives, Kingsley Chinda factional speaker of the River State House of Assembly, Martin Amiwole, and former council chairman, George Arilu, amongst others. Well, they are demanding that the Inspector General of Police continue to occupy the councils, by extension the police officers, and not succumb to any form of intimidation. We are in support of the position of the Nigerian police. Yes, sir. The Inspector General, under the leadership of the Commander-in-Chief, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has helped to bring peace to River State, even when there are provocative actions that could lead to breakdown of law and order. And so for us, we want to encourage the Inspector General and his men to continue to bring peace and order in River State. We want to call on all to abide by the rule of law. Let public office holders understand that they must obey the laws of the land. And as a people, we are taking a peace walk through our local government this morning to talk to the people, to demonstrate our support for peace and order. What we are saying this morning is that we stand by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes, what we are saying this morning is that we stand by democracy, which has, which has enshrined the principles of separation of powers. Indeed, rivers people have woken up and I'm happy that at this point in time in our history, people are getting more enlightened. People are beginning to demand that the rights be done at all times. Any attempt to abandon laws of river states would definitely be an invitation to anarchy. Nobody wants anarchy. Nobody wants us to go back to the state of nature where life is brutish, hasty, nasty, and short. We cannot allow that situation where government will break down. And that is why all our laws must be obeyed. Even the governor must obey laws of river states. He cannot cherry pick. The governor cannot cherry pick which law to obey and which one to disobey. Well, staying in River State as early as 7.30 a.m. today, women from Ipo, which is one of the host communities, of the Port Harcourt Airport blocked the gate at the airport roundabout, waving placards, singing, and even cooking at the gate. But some of the inscriptions on their banner include, We demand our citizens' rights, people women peaceful protest, among 
others. The actions caused a buildup of traffic as passengers couldn't access the airport. But this is the second time this year that the women are protesting. Uh, they protested on March the 27th, uh, but were pacified by former chairman of the River's Traditional Rulers Council, Sergeant Aose, and it appears they're back again. Then you see the buildup of the traffic as a result of the protest by the women. You see the women there uh, literally taking charge of that access gate. But let's get more insight into, you could call this another page in this long, winding political impasse in River State. We're joined on the program by Senator Lakam Wogo, a former senator representing River Southeast, joins us virtually on the program. You're welcome to Lunchtime Politics, Senator. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Well, let me begin uh, with, I mean, the protests we saw from uh, the minority leader in, in the House and then uh, uh, Mr. Martin Amawule, before we come to the women protest. Uh, for them, they say that they're supporting the police. They're asking the IGP to continue uh, to take charge of the council secretariat. And, and I wonder, why is there really a need to support the police? Does, is there any plan, anything that they've gotten wind of to the contrary? Well, I, I think that characterization of that support the police was something uh, not used literally. It's more like we support peace. You know, there are two groups now. There are the incumbent chairman, who were the elected council chairman, who uh, by reason of the laws of the state, have the necessity to continue in office. Their tenure has been extended by virtue of the fact that there were no elected people to take over at the expiration of the tenure. So the state assembly had made a law, which is the law of the state, that allowed them to remain in office. Now, there are the other people who have been illegally brought in, caretaker, committee chairmen, and members who were not elected and there is an express, the constitution expressly forbids them. The laws of the state also forbids them. So these two sets of people had laid claim to the council and the police came in to forestall the breakdown of law and order. So they can accept, they actually they express acceptance of the status quo in the circumstance just because of peace. Otherwise, they are men argument is that those who are the elected council chairman should continue in office as prescribed by law. But also they are mindful that this matter is in court. So everybody agrees that the court should run its course. And in the circumstance, the police has to be there to prevent both parties from assessing the council. But truly, the people who should be in council are the elected chairman who have been denied access to council. And the caretaker people who today have been told they can operate from hotels, you can see how we have degenerated. People are sworn in and they are told that they'll be giving money, public money, and that they can stay in their hotels, stay in their houses and spend the money. I thought to spend public funds, you need to do the proper procedure. You should be in an office, you should hold your meetings, you should have access to records and officials of the council. There should be a budget that guides your expenditure. But these people have been told they can spend the money, that they'll be giving money and they can stay in their hotels and spend. So, but they are trying to go to the council, which did not materialize. So right now we have a stalemate and the police are the only people saving lives in Port Harcourt now in River State because by their intervention, they are, they've avoided the clash of these two groups. And that is, that is the situation. It's just a match for peace and to say the peace should be upheld by the police. But the true state of things is that there are elected people who have genuine claim to council leadership and there are unelected people who right. do not, but are being forced on the system by the 
government. All right, Senator Wong, so speak to this. Uh, you, you'd given your own side uh, how you expected things uh, to have played out. But in the, I mean, in the face of the fact that the law abhors a vacuum, so the tenor uh, of the former chairman had elapsed, what would you have prescribed? Because from what we've seen, even the former governor uh, had put in place caretaker chairman, even the one before had put in place caretaker chairman. So why all of a sudden uh, the caretaker chairman arrangement or chairman arrangement as the case is, is now illegal in court, is not some, now something unacceptable. So why is it different this time when we've seen previous administrations put in place uh, you know, such arrangements? Senator. Yeah, the, the difference is there has been a lot of cry that the use of chairman of uh, caretaker leadership is an aberration to our laws, that we're in a democracy. So oh, that this has been an ongoing conversation. A lot of efforts have gone into educating leaders that they should stay within the law. People are elected and then they easily truncate to, uh, democracy and bring in unelected people. So towards the expiration of this particular um, three years, the assembly people sensitized the state. They, because the laws were made in, an open, in the open chambers. It wasn't a hidden thing. They had sessions. They talked about it. They wanted the state to start the process of elections. It did not happen. And when they saw that, from all indications, elections would not hold. Even the presidential party, the president's intervention, between all the factions. The president expressly made it an item in the agreement that there shall be no caretaker, which the governor signed and also the minister for FCT signed. So we all understood there will be no caretakers. But election ought to have been held. The governor has been power for a year now. He needed only three months to conduct the election. He did not. He waited to allow the time run out. So the assembly brought a law. The local government law 2018 allowed for caretakers, but the amendment 2023 completely abhorred the use of caretakers. So as of now, under our laws, there is no platform by which anybody in this state can create a caretaker. So there is a vacuum which I agree, nature approves it. So the, in the wisdom of the lawmakers, which is their right to so do, they passed that post one to section 135 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic that provides for an extension by incremental period of six months for Mr. President if the nation is at war, is in any situation where it's unable to hold elections, the president of this country can continue beyond his four years, but it shall be six months at a time. So they domesticated that law by necessity that if the chairman of council do not have successors elected, the elected ones shall continue for another six months. It was a sensible thing to do. But right. I think all is to ensure that governors start promoting democratic leadership. So no governor will wait for tenors to expire now so he can put a caretaker. You will have to deal with and live with those who were elected. But they are the only people with constitutional mandates. So that was the necessity that brought about that law. And that is our operational law today. You may like it, you may not like it, but anything to the contrary is illegal and unlawful. So we have a body of unelected and illegal caretaker committee members. Also, in Tawagu, they will also they, tell you uh, that they are standing on the law, and some of these cases are even in court, but they will tell you that as far as they are concerned, this is the right way to go because the governor is also empowered, uh, or at least the state governments are empowered to make laws. So which law are they relying upon? Well, this is before the court, but it's quite interesting because you talked about the intervention of the president. It would seem the president uh, has now left the people of River State, or at least the politicians in River State. Uh, he's left you people, it's safe to say that, to your own devices. So the president intervened at some point, but clearly that is not working. If anything, it looks like we're worse off, uh, I mean, where we were before the president intervened. So isn't this a call to at least the, the politicians in River State, the leaders in River State, to say, well, it looks like we're on our own now and uh, we're doing ourselves, as they will say, in local parlance because the people that will be at the receiving end are the River's people. The politicians in River State, if there is no peace, who would you govern? So isn't that a time to actually sit back and say, 
But let's tell ourselves the truth. We, we are, we are, and that's why I'm one of those who always say, let's de-escalate. We are. Uh, it's time for us to de-escalate, but just to put a few things. First, let's be clear. The governor and the government does not have any powers to make laws. That's not how it's done. There are lawmakers, and the governor is the executive. He executes the separation of powers and the uh, three branches that we operate our government in leaves us with a legislature that makes law, an executive that executes, and of course the judiciary that interprets our laws. And everybody should do their part. Don't interpret for the judiciary. Allow them to do their job. Don't make law for the lawmakers. Allow them to make their laws. And accept that their existence is legal and constitutional, and that is why we have peace. When one branch decides to do the job of the other, because it has either money or it controls resources, then it, it can only lead to this kind of crisis. Two, when a man like the president takes that presidential time to invite all of us, as he did, and spoke to us and asked us, are we comfortable with this? And we all said yes. And we signed and we came out. I think that the right thing is to obey the president. We undermine our own internal peace and security and peaceful coexistence when even the goodwill of people who are like fathers and leaders of our nation are not honored. Mr. Right. President did well. If we follow that agreement, we'll be at peace today. I, in fact, sometimes I wonder why is it so difficult? It's still on the table there. Just execute those eight points and let us move on. But unfortunately, it is belatedly now they are trying to call for elections when the matter is in court. I think at this stage, everybody should just relax, hold a bit. The courts may grind slow, but they will grind right. And whatever the courts decide, whichever way it goes, we must learn to live with it. It right. may favor one person and not favor the other, but it will help us that we have direction. We well, it's wait good. a little. The caretaker thing where in con were contemptuous of court. They were made to, have, to tie the hands of the court. At the time, right. we all expected the appeal court to make pronouncement. These are created to force a fate accompli. So the courts will find that they cannot do anything. They have to live with things that have already been decided by them. Now, well, others Senator will Wargo, resist. So it it's, is it's this resistance. You. Yes. It's good, good to hear you speak in this manner. I sincerely hope uh, that this sentiment is what, or at least is what you find with other politicians, political actors in River State. So maybe you need to do more talking uh, to all of them. Perhaps you can be the, the peacemaker. But we'd like to thank you so much, uh, Senator Lakanwogu, former senator representing River Southeast, uh, for at least uh, calming down the nerves. I hope again that this will ripple uh, across River State. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We'll take a moment now, and when we return, uh, we'll speak to the other side, it will seem, hear from the state government side. And that's in a moment. So stay with us. Welcome back. Well, let's tell you that the Nigeria Labour Congress NLC is advising President Bola Tinubu to consult further with stakeholders before sending an executive bill to the National Assembly for a new minimum wage. The president of the NLC, Mr. Joe Ajero, gave the advice at a meeting with officials of the Kogi state government in Abuja. And according to him, such consultation will help eliminate possible disagreement, bearing in mind that the Tripartite Committee did not have a consensus on what the minimum wage, that's the new one, should be. The leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress hosts some officials of the Kogi State Government at the Labour House in Abuja. The leader of the delegation is the former state chairman of the NLC. He led several protests against the last administration of Governor Yahya Bello before his appointment as a special assistant to the current governor on labour matters. As product of Nigeria Labour Congress. He gives an update on the current labour and government relationship in the state. I want to make it clear that Kogi State is paying 30,000 Naira minimum wage in Kogi State. And it was being paid and implemented by the previous government. This is what some of us were frontier in fighting because of them when I was the chairman of Nigeria Labour Congress. And it was implemented. We equally came down to let him know that the government is already doing some intervention rules and implementing things 
since he came on board. Letting him to know that at least for today, we have 100% of our salaries being paid as at when due. The occasion also afforded the NLC president to speak on a new minimum wage debate. This matter is being taken to the president. When will we may have it? That is dos dotted all eyes and cross all teeth. It will be taken for him and is expected for him or of him to reach out to the tripartite people, not just labor, the employers, people representing government, to see whether they can build a synergy outside the negotiating table to come up with a figure that should be transmitted to the National Assembly. That's our position. Because for him to adopt any of the positions, you see that the, the other parties will feel agreed. But as of today, you know, none of such has happened. It's been two weeks since the Tripartite Committee on the New Minimum Wage completed their negotiations. The committee is expected to submit its report to President Tinubu, who has already promised to send an executive bill to the National Assembly for the amendment of the National Minimum Wage Act. Well, let's now go back to River State, uh, where there's been lots of development, particularly today protests affecting the airport on the streets of River State. We're joined now by the Commissioner for Information in the state, Mr. Joe Johnson, joins us virtually. Well, Mr. Johnson, another day, another protest in River State. Well, we saw uh, the House Minority Leader, Mr. Martin Amiwole, and others leading that protest. We also saw uh, Ipo women uh, protesting around the airport. So uh, speak to us about how you're well, handling all of these protests, the march across River State. Uh, Mr. Johnson, if you could just unmute uh, uh, so we can get your response uh, on this, particularly about the protests uh, we saw this morning as early as 7.30 a.m. Ipo women uh, around the airport uh, causing a lot of traffic. Uh, they saw top politicians also leading you know, a, a solidarity march uh, for FCT minister. We saw Mr. Kingsley Chinda, Martin Amewule, and the rest. So how are you receiving these protests, Commissioner? Please go ahead. Uh, I hope you got me, uh, Commissioner. All right, not to worry. We'll try to uh, reconnect with the Commissioner for Information in River State, Mr. Joe Johnson. It's quite vital uh, to get a sense of what's playing out there, particularly uh, the side of the state government. But let's tell you that President Bolatinibu has approved the appointment of Mr. Latanji Bello as the new Chief Executive Officer and Executive Vice Chairman of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, pending confirmation by the Senate. Mr. Bello is a lawyer, administrator, and renowned journalist. He's a former secretary to the Lagos State Government and holds a master's degree in international law and diplomacy from the University of Lagos. He studied law at the same university and was called to bar in 2002. According to the statement by Special Advisor on Media to the President, Ajirin Galali, the President expects that the new Chief Executive Officer will ensure the Commission's mandate of protecting and promoting the interest and welfare of Nigerian consumers and ensuring the adoption of measures to guarantee the safety and quality of goods and services. Um, other stories, the newly elected uh, head of the Southern Governors Forum, uh, that's Governor Dapo Abiodu of Ogun State, has highlighted some of the resolutions reached at the just concluded meeting of 17 governors of the Southern region. Governor Abiodu explains that security, infrastructure development, harnessing natural resources in each state and food security top the agenda of the forum. He was guest on our political program, Politics Today. We discussed was the issue of security. If indeed we are going to be uh, talking about how to uh, enhance our socio-economic development as a region, we all know that we cannot have any meaningful development in that atmosphere of insecurity. We all spoke with one voice in support of uh, 
street policing. Uh, we spoke with one voice in support of regional security outfits, which almost all regions have uh, set up and uh, that are working hand in hand and hand in gloves with the law enforcement agencies and providing them with intelligence uh, and support. We spoke about infrastructure. I uh, believe that for us to be uh, regionally integrated, we must have the required infrastructure uh, uh, for, 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 for investment facilitation. We spoke about uh, also uh, uh, enjoining and ensuring that the federal government transfers some of these strong air roads, some of the states have expressed interest to take them over because we are one and the same anyway. Um, our citizens don't know the difference between a federal road and a state road. So if a government is willing to take over a road, we have encouraged the federal government to transfer that road to them. And of course, we clear the federal government to also begin to look at, we have these some of the roads that are currently in, in bad states. But overall, the governors decided that we must have a multi-modal transport master plan that allows us to connect rail transportation, road transportation, air transportation, and water transportation. So we discussed infrastructure. We discussed the issue of food security, uh, particularly at this point in time, uh, uh, the issue of state security, uh, and, 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 and the role of governors being chief security indeed and in truth, not just chief security officers uh, uh, by name. Well, that's the program for this afternoon. Not to worry, we'll get you the side of the state government subsequently. It's a big day as always in River State. But that's what we anchor for now. Stay with Channels Television for all of the breaking stories. I'm Kyrie Kikuli. Goodbye.